And we are going to start with the dreaded window cleaning. What have you got to help us out with this chore, Carson? This is actually my favorite time of year. Not because of the gardens, but because I can clean all the grime off the house. That said, though, windows are my personal nemesis. I hate window <laughs> cleaning because I always start outside, then I move inside, and I see all the streaks that I left outside. <laughs> this year, though, I'm going to do things a little bit different. So I've grown up on the blue stuff. This is what I always used as a kid, grew up with it. It was always in my house, always in my cleaning pantry. But lately, I've noticed that I've become really sensitive to the ammonia. And a lot of people online are talking about that as well. Ammonia in window cleaners is actually really hard on the breathing system. So I tried a couple of different options. Some of them worked really well. The one I loved, vinegar. Now, mm -hmm. I'm fine with vinegar. Other people have sensitivities, but I'm good with it. So half white vinegar, half water, and just a few droplets of blue dish soap. This worked fantastic, and to make it even better, I used a really simple technique of newspaper. You kind of let the cat out of the bag for him, but that's okay. Newspaper <laughs> works great. It's really absorbent, and the soy-based ink doesn't streak. So I've been using all of my old newspaper instead of paper towel. That way it's multi-use, it's better for the environment, and it goes straight into my composter when I'm done with it. Uh, you know, read the paper and then use them to clean, and they get double duty, right? Let's move on to using exactly. a pressure washer for cleanup. So you can cause a lot of damage with this machine. <laughs> Give us some tips. Well, I always joke because the snowblower goes in and the pressure washer comes out at this time of year. <laughs> and I've got a big heavy duty pressure washer. And I love using it on the doors and on metal trims on my garage door, but the pressure washer can cause a lot of problems, which is why I like these new products that are starting to come out. This is not a pressure washer. This is called the power cleaner. The difference because this one actually has a battery system in it and it just increases the strength of your hose. So it doesn't cause the same issues. Now this one's by Craftsman, but you're seeing more and more of these out in the marketplace. These are fantastic because you can't do as much damage. A pressure washer, you can strip paint off, but this one is perfect for cleaning around the doors. Now, if you're gonna clean around the doors though, I like to use a little bit of baking soda first. So one 250 gram box of baking soda to a couple liters of water, just scrub down around the doors and on the trims and the lintels. The reason why, it gets rid of mold spores. If you're an allergy sufferer, this is a rough time of year and mold builds up around the door. And every time that door opens, it pulls the spores in. Baking soda will stop that. What you don't want to use a pressure washer for is your deck. Now, a lot of people in the past have used pressure washers and even these power cleaners on their decks. You need to avoid that. What happens over time with all that heavy pressure is you start getting pitting in the wood. And I'm going to show you this piece here. This is just a piece of old barn board, but the exact same thing happens. The rain continues to chew away the fibers. You accelerate this process on your deck by using a pressure washer. So instead, go with just a simple boat brush. They're not as strong. They still do the job. You can actually get ones on poles so you can scrub. And if you combine this with, say, a stain eraser or something specifically designed for wood, you can get the stains out and you don't cause extra damage. That's really good to know. That uh, pressure washer has ruined many a deck. So thank you for the tips. Let's move on to cleaning the eaves. So important with all the rain that we get in the spring. Take us through that. It's one job that I tend to neglect. And here's a perfect example. This is my eaves trough. And as you can see, I have neglected the buildup of the needles in it. Any eaves troughs on the side of the house that are close to trees cause a lot of problems when they get clogged up, especially at this time of year. So yeah, you want to get in there. You want to clean them out. There's no easy solution. I've tried the machines. I've tried everything. I didn't get anything to work properly other than my hands. So getting on a ladder, cleaning them out is ideal. Once you've cleaned them out though, there are a few things you can do. I like these new foam wedges. The wedge actually fits down into the eaves trough and this actually stops the leaves from getting down in but the water drains through the foam so it stops any debris from clogging your eaves trough. Another one that I'm a huge fan of is this guy here. Exact same process but it clips onto your eaves trough. Rainwater goes through, none of the debris does. And if you want to save a little bit of money, there's one thing that every eaves trough should have during it on its downpipe, and it's this little cone. This little cone fits into the actual downspout, like this, if I can do it, yep. And what it does is it stops the leaves and the heavy debris from plugging the downspout. Mm. $2, $2 will save you so much headache if you're like me and you don't get around to cleaning out the eaves, eaves troughs on a regular basis. Thank you, Carson.